Okay everybody, it's 12.15 and welcome to this week's webinar with myself Jasper Lawler on behalf of CMC Markets. Quite a lot of things going on this week so glad you could attend. We've got the risk warnings on the screen that we're going to look at first. If you have any questions at any point certainly feel free to send them through the chat or the Q&A box and I'm, I'm happy to answer as best I can. So you can see we're, we're red across equity markets today. I'm hoping a few of you managed to to read my my morning update. Um, basically, it's just it's got risk aversion here. So, you know, any of you who are long gold, uh, any of you who are short equities, any of you long the yen, um, you you know you're doing well. Maybe maybe long long bonds, short yields. Uh, that's all risk aversion type stuff. Why is that risk aversion? Well, specifically when we're looking at sterling. You know, we can highlight the Brexit risks. You know, there were some polls showing the uh, uh, showing the biggest lead for for leaving the EU that we've seen so far. Uh, but also, there's a lot of stuff going on for the for the UK economy this week. On Tuesday, we've got inflation data. Uh, Wednesday, we've got unemployment data and wage data. And on Thursday, of course, we've got the Bank of England. Um, so there's some selling going in ahead of that data and ahead of the, the Bank of England meet. Um, the data for the UK, if we look last week at the the industrial production, for example, uh, retail sales uh, before that, have been pretty decent. Um, so I'm not sure that this is selling in the pound necessarily ahead of inflation data. Um, oil price has obviously been rising and uh, the other data has been okay. We've seen a bit of a growth slowdown, so that could impact inflation. And um, you know maybe that growth slowed slow down again could weigh in on um, uh, unemployment. It seems like businesses are actually those um, more hesitant ahead of uh, the the referendum than consumers so much. Uh, but even that seems to be vaguely limited. Looking at the, that industrial production data, um, so maybe you know there's been um, a bit of a hold back on hiring before the referendum. I'm fairly doubtful of that, to be honest. I don't think it'll be anything substantial. So while we're on the matter, why not why not just have a look at sterling? Because that's one of the big, big, big movers that we've seen. This is the chart that I've had um, on for a while. Now we've been in this this holding pattern since we collapsed um, when the vote was first announced, the date of the vote was announced. Uh, we crashed all the way down uh, but we've not got uh, really back below that one, those 138s, 139s lows and we've basically fallen into a trading pattern. And we had a few, um, it, you know, it looked like um, a week or so ago that actually the uh, the Remain camp was well ahead. Uh, the polls have changed since then. We've seen a, a big drop in sterling and obviously last week was um, a particularly big one. Mm -hmm. Suddenly getting hammered with phone calls as soon as I start a webinar. So <coughs> we highlighted in last week that uh, there was a couple of areas of potential support. Obviously we got down and we basically already tested this 143.40 type area on that drop there. And so this rebound to the to the highs, which we then failed at, once we'd found that support, but then failed again at the resistance of this of this trading range area, it did increase the odds that we're going to drop through that support. Obviously, that happened pretty spectacularly on Friday, and uh, and we followed through on that today. So we, you know, there was a bit of a pause at uh, the 142 round number. Also, I think this formerly broken trend line. We we held above that last week, but we've we've actually gapped onto the trend line and below it today, suggesting that um, to me looks like 140.50. This support down here, obviously the lows, you know, we're only 50 odd pips away from that anyway. That that looks fairly likely that that kind of area is going to get challenged. We're already well down there on the 141, but 140 is obviously the big round number. And I think we come pretty close to that again. There's going to be there's going to be chop and change with these uh, with the polls, so sterling is no doubt tricky to to trade at the moment. Um, I think we've probably got a 
say that it's going to be in this choppy trading range until we had the result. Um, by default, you know, an, an in vote, decent for sterling, and a uh, an out vote, bad for sterling. I think that's a fair assumption. But what probably is worth noting as well is that the Bank of England are going to be on hold for a while with the Fed on hold and with uh, the UK economy looking a little bit shakier and a natural sort of dovish inclination on the BOE in my opinion they're going to be holding on for a while that is a net negative for, for sterling so um, even if uh, the referendum turns out alright from, from a sterling perspective um, it may not be that we make much progress beyond 147 So difficulty with the, the sharp turn down here is that we've obviously to some extent missed the boat. But we've had a decent rebound off the lows. So if you are still looking to try and capture some downside, I would say I would say there's risk here. But the fact that we're below this declining trend line that was broken, now we're back below it, uh, suggests that the trend is still down. That was a good technical barrier. And really all you need to do is just pull down to the, the lower time frames and, and see if we can find some, some pullbacks from from these former areas. We've also we've already had a little bit from, from 142.30 obviously if we could get back up to these peaks at 142.70 you know look for any turnaround in that area if not there then back to this consolidation point at the 143.30 the 40 area that we previously mentioned. While we're on the subject of FX uh, we've obviously got the Fed this week. That is event numero uno uh, for markets. And the fact that we've been getting a bit of a rebound in the dollar recently um, certainly weighs on other markets. So, you know, rebound in the dollar, that's, uh, that's negative for oil. Obviously, oil's been a big scare factor for markets. Uh, but it also affects China. China devalued their, their currency at the fix by about two handles today. That was quite a big drop, basically, in the value of the, uh, the Chinese yuan against the dollar as the People's Bank of China set it back down close to those lows that we saw this year, which were actually in themselves five-year lows. Uh, and so that feeds again into that devaluation story with the Chinese yuan. Uh, that, that devaluation happens as the dollar goes up in value. China has to then devalue against the dollar uh, because it's pegged. It has to bring that exchange rate lower in order to stay competitive. And, 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 uh, and because the dollar is a big part of the basket of currencies that they monitor, uh, they have to devalue against the dollar to keep that basket in line. So that devaluation risk comes back into play when, when the dollar's rising. I don't think the dollar has much basis for rising. And maybe what we could see this week is if the Fed are fairly hesitant and dovish, then that this dollar rally eases up and um, maybe that benefits the, the, the sort of risk on behavior in markets. Um, keeping in mind that last week we came as high as 1% off the, the record highs in US stocks. So let's just have a look at... Uh, the US 30 while we're at it. This is typically where I start things anyway but so let's just get back to where we normally are. So this is the range that we've been looking at for a long time. <coughs> Markets acting fairly orderly. Now here was the first warning sign obviously with the benefit of hindsight but we had the support got a false break you know if you'd bought just on this uh, hammer type pattern um, at the lows here on the 19th of May you're laughing now obviously um, you know you've pretty much made uh, 17,400 up to 600 points just on that little reversal at support. So, you know, trading can be simple, but obviously, you know, you get a bit worried on the on, on the journey. Uh, so, but actually, technically, things have worked out quite smoothly. We hit the resistance, we pulled back to the resistance, we came back, hit the broken declining trend line, and we've pushed up and made a new high. But we're now pulling back from the round number of 18,000. And there, you know, here's the um, the record peaks from here, from 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 the pretty much this time last year. So uh, you know this is understandably uh, understandably a big area of resistance, and uh, I have to be I have to say I'm mindful of the ne next big turn lower. Um, I, we've not quite got the makings for it yet. We're still making higher highs and higher lows. Um, so you know I'm still positive on the market now, but I'm I'm mindful. Uh, of us, um, you know, of us making the big turn lower inside this this trading range. 
But as I said, as we hit this 18k mark, that was within 1%. Uh, so, you know, you can't exactly really describe us in a state of risk off markets in terms of US stocks. Little bit different when it comes to stocks on the continent. Obviously, let's have a look at the FTSE here. Uh, we've had this support in for a while. You know, I've not changed this this trend line since I first drew it in against this low in May, and we've held it again nicely today. I mentioned in the chart forum that I would say, given that we've got these highs in April, we come down, we challenge the support multiple times. It holds good. Move up, retest the 200-day moving average try and take out that peak from May 31st, fail to do so, and nowhere close even to taking out the, the April peak, and now we're back down at the support again for what you could call a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eighth time. You know, we're well overdue breaking the support at this point. I, I think the, uh, you know, you've got to temper what time frame you're trading off here, and you've got to manage the risk, because we've already come down fairly big in the last couple of days, uh, three days including today, but I think the odds are that um, we're going to break the support. That's my feeling on this. And so if we do that, um, then the to me the next logical area would be this, um, this low that we put in in December, which has acted a bit of a pivot point, uh, you know, kind of a touch, a break, a, a down, a retest, up and above, not so much, but then a retest there. So uh, to, to me, that um, that that lines up. Obviously, we've got six thousand below, so we could get a false break down to six thousand and up again, depending on how the the polls go, global risk sentiment, what the Fed says. That that's fairly feasible, but I think the support gives way, even if it is a false break. Um, but my my sense is that we're we're hit, you know, the next logical area of support again is that at five eight six five. Again, we're in a trading range. So picking extended periods of direction one way or the other is not this is not the opportune market for for um, trading the trend right now the the FTSE 100 it, it's choppy as hell and so you know this is just just a matter of your own trading style do you just regularly trade the UK 100 in which case okay so you're stuck on this market you have to trade you have to trade what you get if you're not stuck on the UK 100 and you're open to trading a diverse range of markets, look to something that's trending, because this is really a mess at the moment. Um, you know, we've got a nice support at 6.050, uh, but as I said, it's, um, I think there's a good chance of it breaking. It's, 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 it's tricky to call at the moment. Germany 30 looking even weaker. So you can see this is, uh, again, had this uh, area of support in since we put these th series of lows in here. We've got a nice rebound off it, got above the 200 day again, similar to the FTSE bounce it off the 200 day, but we just haven't even taken out the May. Same thing, you know, haven't taken out the May 31st peak, let alone the April peak. Rolled over, broken the fairly well defined rising trend line, and as of today, we gapped down beneath this support area here. So this support has completely given way as of now. If we get a close up above this gap, that would actually be a pretty positive development, a gap down and then a close above. That's actually more of a bullish reversal, but um, we're not there yet. Um, but we need to be open to the idea. Just because we open down here in itself is a bearish sign, but you know, be wary of where we close. Uh, but I think you can see it's fairly clear cut on the chart that the next support is the is the round number 9500 uh, with these two lows uh, from back in April and March being the sort of defining price support. But um, this, the, you know, I've mentioned previously that this is a bearish pattern and we have broken out down to the downside. So things are kind of making sense, if you like, uh, on the Germany 30. Um, again, it's choppy range trading conditions, but, you know, that we were in a, a bit of a trend. Um, and obviously, the fact that we couldn't even take out this high, when theoretically, if this pattern was to be holding, we should be heading up right here for a challenge. You know, that obviously has not in any sense the word happened. Um, so you know we're in at the very at very least we're in range trading conditions here, not a strong uptrend. Um, not so much in the way of uh, euro data this week. Very much a focus on the UK, uh, but also the US. Um, I think the 
think the dollar index has maybe fallen off my chart because I think was it it was a June expiry. So we're on to September now. Uh, but if I just go here, if I add this back to my uh, uh, what's going on? Always a risk when you do this sort of thing uh, live. Okay, let's slide that into my watch list over here. Uh, so we have a quick look at the dollar. I mean, I, I, as a personal preference, I don't actually trade the index. So I, you know, the euro is a big component of the index, and you get some of the bigger moves against the individual currencies. Um, yeah, like I said, this this index this um, contract has not been live for that long. Um, because we only got a bit of data on this, but you can see as I was talking about last week, a couple of big jump up days in the dollar index and I would say uncoincidentally big sell off in markets at the same time in stocks. But um, again, you know, just based on US economic data and based on uh, comments from the Fed, not that much justification for, uh, for dollar, dollar strength at the moment. You know, the only real arguable reason for dollar strength is that um, you know still comparable to uh, to Europe and the UK, which faces its own set of risks. Uh, maybe on a relative basis, still there's some safety be safety to be had by moving into U.S. assets. So, I think that's uh, you know that's you know that's why the the dollar acts as a as a haven in signs of uh, times of uncertainty. So that that sort of haven type basis relative outperformance even though its performance itself is kind of weak the US economy could be a reason for dollar strength but um, obviously a lot of it will depend on what the Fed and how they how they tune their wordage and it's always very hard to to guess exactly it always makes sense in my experience to lean on the make some dovish assumptions uh, but the Fed could leave July the July meeting on the table I, I'm doubtful of that based on the um, the recent speech from, from Janet Yellen in Philadelphia. Um, I, I tend to think there's going to be a very vague reference of the next few months, which perhaps leaves September on the table. So let's move more specifically into FX. We've looked at sterling, but um, well, let's have a look at uh, the yen because obviously we've got the Bank of Japan meeting this week as well. That's on Thursday, early hours Thursday. Uh, I'll look at dollar yen, also look at um, sterling yen. I mentioned on Twitter that sterling yen has been absolutely smashed. I'm sure, you know, mate, you might have seen it yourselves. Um, <coughs> but uh, failed breakout of the declining trend line here on the dollar yen. So again, one of those where, you know, if you bought here on the, the break of the trend line, um, Potentially could have been a good move, uh, but it actually we failed at the resistance. It wasn't a high probability move, uh, but depending on your strategy, if you trade trend line breaks, you have to take them. Um, you know, okay, so the so actually we got an inside day uh, where this this candlestick fit inside this daily candlestick, and then we got a breakdown the next day back below the trend line. So hopefully, you know, this is the thing with trading. If this was a failed trade for you, um, you bought on a breakout there. You know, maybe you had your stop under the lows, um, then it got taken out on this candlestick. Hopefully, you've got the wear of all to think, okay, things have changed. Um, we're back below the 21 or whatever is that, the 50-day moving average, back below the, the trend line, more importantly. Um, inside day breakdown, um, let's, let's change directions. And then you've got opportunities, and now we're back down right at the support. So if you'd been, you know, taking profits around 106, you, you know, you're laughing on the short side. Um, <coughs> So we are back at the, uh, I mentioned last week that I thought we were heading back down to these lows, um, but I did say that I think we maybe get, well, maybe we hold them, but you know, maybe a false break lower down to 105. Um, our, our support that we've been mentioning for a while, which has basically already been hit, but you know, 105.30, maybe we get a little drop through that down close to 105 and then a pop. So just kind of these scenar scenarios available in your mind. There's different ways of playing that. You can obviously have an order resting down near 105. I'd say perhaps a more prudent approach is wait for some confirmation off 105 before deciding to assume that this is a, a range bound market rather than an outright downtrend. 
as far as the Bank of Japan meeting, um, they have surprised recently by uh, by, uh, by turning rates negative. That was not well received uh, by markets, and so it'd be surprising if they were, if they doubled down and and did that again. Uh, really, I think the only thing that would be well received by markets would be if they um, if if they enacted some sort of extra quantitative easing. But the political support for this policy is starting to run out in Japan. You know, they are literally buying ETFs. Um, they own a good chunk of the the, the JGB bond market. Um, they're running out of space to to be able to do anything more. I, I I'd be surprised if they if they do anything um, really interventionist, particularly after this G7 meeting recently as well, uh, where there was a bit of a sort of bias against. Um, intervening in currency markets coming from the US so to my mind uh, the BOJ are going to sit and do nothing and uh, you know maybe reconsider the situation once we're below 100 if we get below 100 uh, but let's have a look at euro as I mentioned not so much in the way euro data so pretty much going to get driven by the by the Fed Choppy, difficult markets. Um, you know, in general, we're near the top of this historical trading range, and uh, the sell orders are the higher probability. Um, so we had a sell off at 114. Um, you know, I didn't particularly highlight that area in my chart. You know, I think the 114, uh, 146.30, 114.60. Sorry, I'm good. misreading the numbers here. Uh, 114.60. Bit higher probability into the 115s would truly be the top of the range. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see how we go from here. Um, obviously, dovish Fed, uh, long Euro, uh, oh, sorry, dovish Fed, uh, short Euro, um, and uh, you know, hawkish Fed, vice versa. But again, that same principle in terms of talking about, I know the euro dollar is one of the most popular products and you know, short term it's a different affair and I know some of you use this webinar for short term trading and just a bit of, get a bit of a longer term outlook, um, not necessarily uh, for any specific levels but more just general bias. Uh, for you guys obviously, you know, there's always a short term trading opportunities every day um, but you know, on that longer term looking for a trend nature, you know, I'm, I'm I wouldn't be looking at this market at the moment. It's, it's just it's Chopville. I did mention I would look at um, sterling yen. So we basically got down to 150 um, in um, in sterling. We've actually bounced 40 odd pips from from the lows, 30 odd pips. Um, oh, so we actually dipped below 150. I hadn't even seen that. So that that happened in the last hour or so. So we've <laughs> we've hit that big round number support. Uh, potentially got further to go if we're going to challenge this declining trend line, but it's only two touches, not too much to that, just something to be aware of. We're obviously also coming up to this RSI trend line, so potentially a bit further to go. Um, really the only thing you've got going for you on this, if you're going long here, is that we hit the 150 mark, so round numbers by themselves, not really a reason enough to um, to go along the currency. My bias is that the Bank of Japan not doing any more easing, so that's that's um, positive yen, and obviously stocks are selling off. Yen um, is a haven currency, is a safe haven. So we've got about five minutes left of the the webinar at this point. Um, any cues, send them through. Um, but another big factor that I can't remember if I mentioned at the start of the webinar, but um, oil back below fifty. So I'd, I've been highlighting this, uh, this divergence. Uh, we've got another pop through the the rising trend line I'd highlighted, a pop through the diverging RSI line, but we're back below it now. So that's that's a bit negative. What I had mentioned previously uh, is that we, you know, it made a bit more sense when we hadn't had that big nice run up above 50, but still to some extent we've got this rising price trend line, and we've got this RSI line. So RSI normally a leading indicator. Um, obviously, it gives false signals, but we're below that rising RSI line, and uh, the next test would be this rising price trend line here. So, 
to get down there would be quite a big drop off so maybe some um you know maybe some uh, some dip buyers down there uh but if we do finally give up on that rising trend line you know that may be the confirmation that 50 um it, it is the short term top Gold has um, gold's been a lot of fun. Gold has been a, a you know a, a a great market for trading. Also a bit range bound, but it's just held the range very well. Um, so here was the um, here was the one area considered to be the bottom of the range, and then here is the the one one ninety. Um, we basically came down in the mid of those two supports um, you know you could argue that we basically came off one two hundred so uh, we had two areas of, uh, of support uh, we hit the mid of those two supports which happens to be the round number we bounced pretty aggressively we're right back up to the top of the range in gold it's still at this point though um, you know even though at the moment it feels like everything is is risk off um, keep in mind that just a week and a half ago everything felt very bullish and the gold was selling off so that that can the sentiment can change uh, on a dime and um, we're basically running back up into this area that we uh, that kind of triggered the sell-off in the first place which is the sort of 1 two ninety kind of area I'm assuming we're going up to test one uh, one three hundred but um, you've got to have some sort of pretty a pretty short term outlook with some controlled stops to um to be going long at this point because we've had a a big old run up four days of gains uh but actually uh we're up for uh six days out of the last seven with a big old move almost up well up ninety dollars so that's that's pretty huge certainly that you know we've had a false break to the downside, but keep in mind again not too distant uh, history where we basically had a break to the a false break to the top side so kind of we've had it both both areas of the range here um, anyone trading the breakouts uh, not loving gold anyone who's been trading the range uh, loving gold So I think that's about it. We've pretty much hit the 30 minute mark. So um, thank you very much for attending. It's going to be a fun week. We've got the central bank meetings, obviously. They're going to be the, the main drivers, but all's back below 50. We'll have to see if that can hold. And it's, um, you know, we've seen bond yields at uh, record lows. So will uh, the German Bund drop below 0% into negative, uh, the German 10 year? That'll be a big question mark in markets. Um, could all happen this week so hopefully there's be some action for you to trade but thanks very much for attending and uh, good luck with trading Jasper Lawless signing out